Thank you. Now come to the front bench speeches. Chris Stevens. The chair and can I congratulate my uh, good friend and comrade from Western Bartonshire for securing this debate and uh, for, for giving a, a very uh, excellent uh, outline of the position of so many people who are caught up in this particular scandal and I want to uh, compliment the honourable members for North Norfolk and Feltham and Heston for their excellent uh, speeches too. Um, as others have said, uh, Mr uh, Robertson, mortgage prisoners are people who are unable to switch mortgages to a better deal even if they're up to date with their payments and it's estimated that up to 40,000 people in Scotland are currently in the category of mortgage prisoners. Most mortgage prisoners have a mortgage in a closed book of an inactive firm and this means that the mortgage is held with a lender that can no longer make mortgage contracts because they're not authorised to do so. At the same time, Regulators and lenders imposed more stringent criteria on borrowing to help prevent another financial crash. And many people were unable to meet the new conditions and as a result, they were <coughs> unable to move to other deals, even if they would pay less by doing so. And stakeholders, including Martin Lewis and the UK Mortgage Prisoners Action Group, have consistently uh, criticised the government for not taking action to help mortgage prisoners and in 2023 a report undertaken by the London School of Economics funded by Martin Lewis said that the UK government had made a surplus of £2.4 billion from the sale of the mortgage books. It offered costed proposals that are argued would meet government criteria for helping to solve the problem and as we know uh, Mr Robertson there's been previous parliamentary debates on this issue with the Lords agreeing an amendment to the Financial Services Bill in 2021, uh, which the Commons voted to disagree to that amendment during ping-pong, uh, because the Government argued it would be unacceptable and an unfair intervention into the mortgage market, and as a result the Lords agreed to remove that amendment. The Chief Executive of the FCA told the Treasury Committee in May 2021 that further reforms to help resolve the situation we're up to Parliament. And in March 2023, Lord Sharkey introduced an amendment to the Financial Services and Markets Bill that was identical to the one passed in 2021, and he agreed to withdraw that when the government promised to meet stakeholders to discuss the proposals in the LAC report. And I hope the Minister will update uh, the House on wh where those discussions are. <coughs> Mr Robertson, it is abhorrent that people are at the risk of losing their homes as a result of being missold on mortgages prior to the financial crash. Whilst homeowners across the UK are being hit by soaring mortgage rates, mortgage prisoners are being hit even harder. And I'll give way to my friend. Giving way, one of the part of my opening speech was why we got here, and it's an addiction to a neoliberal economic model, which is to blame for the treatment of mortgage prisoners. Would you agree? Well, I would agree with that, my honourable friend, that as I'm going to come on to, there's a poverty premium here that we, we need to discuss as well, and I'm going to come on to that shortly. Um, as Rachel Neal from the campaign group UK Mortgage Prisoners has noted, their interest rates have gone up from 4.5% all the way up to 9%, 9.5% and 10% and above. A number of these homeowners have been trapped. I'll give way, of course. Well, I thank um, uh, the honourable member for giving way. Um, uh, could I just also uh, just uh, reference again that Rachel Neal is uh, here today and just to thank her for making the time and Jill for coming along today. I'm very grateful for that and I'm grateful that uh, Rachel Neal and others who are caught up in this situation and who are in the action group are uh, here in the gallery today and I hope that they uh, will look forward to this debate and I hope that the Minister will be able to assure them and give them uh, solutions uh, as a result of the debate secured by an honourable friend today. Uh, to put that into perspective, uh, Mr Robertson, someone with an interest-only loan of £120,000 managed by Landmark Mortgages would have seen the payment shoot up by £5,100 a year. That's even before the latest interest rate rise announced last week. And this is one of the starkest examples of what I've referred to uh, in answering my honourable friend of the poverty premium. People who are unable to meet affordability criteria are paying way over the odds 
for something that someone in a better financial position would be charged much less for. It is incredibly unfair that these individuals are paying the price for widespread irresponsible lending prior to 2008. And as the UK mortgage prisoners have said about the dire impact uh, on mortgage prisoners has on people's mental health. And I'll quote Rachel Neal again, who has said that we have had some, uh, we've had people openly put on our Facebook group that they want to commit suicide if this rate rise happens because they have nowhere to go. It's devastating. Families are in impoverished situations. They're facing homelessness. That's the seriousness of the position, Mr Roberts. In 2020, UK mortgage prisoners carried out a survey among mortgage prisoners found that 3% had contemplated suicide as a result of this situation. And it is not unreasonable to assume that this already high figure will likely have increased during the current crisis. Mr Robertson, the UK government must finally take steps to support mortgage prisoners and enable them to remortgage with active lenders. As the London School of Economics report outlines on mortgage prisoners, includes indicative costings as requested by the government. Uh, the report sets out a range of solutions for helping mortgage prisoners to be able to remortgage with active lenders. And these include free comprehensive financial advice for all prisoners required for any borrower who might go on to access other solutions. Interest-free equity loans to clear the unsecured element of Northern Rock's Together loans. Government equity loans on the model of help to buy, interest-free for the first five years. And a fallback option a government guarantee for active lenders to offer prisoners new mortgages. In terms of the cost, it's intimated that these solutions could cost between £50 million and £348 million over 10 years, depending on take-up. And while the overall outlay would be between £370 million to £2.7 billion, this is reduced to that £50 million to £37 million net, as the government would hold some equity loans itself. The government has a moral duty to act to support mortgage prisoners, not only because of the devastating impact being in this position has on those individuals, but also because the UK government themselves have made a surplus of £2.4 billion from the sale of the mortgage books, according to the London School of Economics report. It is an indictment, Mr Robertson, that the government has left to individual campaigner Martin Lewis to fund this study despite the UK government being fully aware of the utter misery the current situation facing financial prisoners is causing. Now that campaigners in the LSE have done the hard work and presented the government with fully costed plans that meet their criteria, the very least the UK government could do is take steps needed to bring these plans into action. And I'll close off again with a quote from Rachel Neal from the uh, group. The severe harm people endured for over a decade, compounded now by 10 consecutive rate rises, means time is not a currency mortgage prisoners have. The proposed solutions need to be considered in detail and urgent action is required now before more homes and lives are lost. And I look forward to the Minister's response to that contribution.